and welcome to Data Drivers. I'm your host, Andrew Smith of Think Uncommon. In this series, we examine how retailers are winning by developing an informed relationship with their customers, how they're better understanding what their customers want, and how they're using data and analytics to deliver increased sales. Now, we all know that in retail, we have access to incredible data. How to use it, though, can be a difficult decision. In this episode, we enter the realm of e-commerce and digital analytics, exploring how data analytics revolutionizes the online shopping experience. We investigate how retailers leverage data to analyze website traffic, track conversion rates, map the customer journey, and unlock the valuable insights that help them enhance user experiences, optimize marketing strategies, and, of course, unlock online sales growth. So, join us as we take a deep dive into the world of retail analytics and discover how it's helping retailers to stay ahead of the game in today's ever-changing, ever-challenging marketplace. The need to get the digital ecosystem right is critical for any retailer looking to build their omni-channel capabilities. And I think historically that's meant getting the buying part of e-commerce, right? You know, just making sure that your website's in good shape, that you've made some smart decisions around what's available in your digital world versus your physical one, and you've thought that through, and that your digital basics are going really well. I think increasingly that means understanding not just your assets, but the assets that bring people to your assets in the digital world. And I think that's sort of the next phase, if you will, of omni-channel strategy. It used to be that for a brand or a retailer, you know, they would have a flagship store and that would represent their brand. Now, the digital part of a consumer's journey is really the showcase for the brand. And so, regardless of if you own your own stores or you're in Target or Walmart or wherever you're selling to the consumer, your own website and your e-commerce site should be the pinnacle of your consumer experience and what you're trying to uh, show buyers represent your brand properly and be the authoritative place for information online about your products. Brands need to think about the consumer journey. We, we always talk about like, what is a consumer's path to purchase? And you have you know people who are considering and thinking about what problem they have, trying to evaluate between different providers. And they're doing a lot of that upfront research online to even decide what store they might walk into later. And then they might come back online to research the product they saw in the store. So it's a continuous circle, what consumers are doing with regards to their digital experience and, and their physical experience. E-commerce actually puts the buying power and the product knowledge into the customer's hands. And you can offer basically an endless aisle. A lot more things in terms of assortment can be offered on the e-com site than you can probably offer in your brick and mortar store. Those customers can look up all the information that they want about your products on your site and they can do price comparisons. And being able to buy online and return in store or pick up in store actually gives the convenience that the customer wants. And it gets them in there interacting with your brand and your products and it doesn't hurt that while they're there, you can make another sale. So e-commerce plays a, a big role, right? Omni-channel strategies are focused on providing that seamless customer experience across a variety of different channels. The goal is obviously making sure that that consistent experience is available for each customer at each touch point. So as a customer begins to shop or research on their desktop and then decides that they are headed out of their home or work and they want to switch to their mobile device, you want, and then maybe even go into the physical store, you want to make sure that that experience is consistent across all of those channels. And so when you think about commerce, it really does play a significant role in making sure that that buying experience doesn't become disjointed as they move through the different channels. Since COVID in particular, there's been some massive changes in the attention that e-commerce gets and the types of metrics that e-commerce is telling brands about what their customers are interested in learning more about. I like to think of COVID as the chief innovation officer in some ways, because there was so much energy that was taken from the in-store experience and put back online. And due to that, all of these new experiences and any new experience that you're gonna put on an e-commerce channel essentially should turn into incremental analytics. And something we've been talking about for the last five, 10 years is being able to unify data in a way that you can make more 
predictive decisions about how you should be interacting with your customer. I would say that that's something that's taken a lot of focus in the last five, 10 years specifically in how you leverage all of this data and then how you democratize that data so it can be leveraged across all of the different business groups. I think brands and retailers in general are trying to deal with more fragmented audiences, knowing more about those audiences and then being able to use what I've learned to be able to reach those audiences in either more efficient or more effective ways through everything from the Amazon Marketing Cloud, which is a version of what's called cleanroom technology, being able to take my own first party data, marry it to somebody else's to accomplish specific objectives. I think there's a lot going on right now from an analytic view that's changing the way that e-commerce works into both a selling platform and increasingly a media platform. And then the most interesting part of that is the integration between it being a media platform and a selling platform. So I think those are some of the some of the big transitions we see at this specific moment. Data analytics really helps marketers in developing this comprehensive 360 degree view of their customers, what their customers need, what actions they're taking across the site, when they're not taking any action, their bounce rate, when do they leave the site? So these metrics allow them to make changes quickly in real time and then help them to quickly assess how to take the next best action, how to be more personalized. If they abandoned product in their cart, for example, what did they abandon in their cart? How long ago are there a lot of items in their cart? You know, what is the next best action to send them the right message at the right time in the right marketing channel? What AI allows retailers to do and brands and whoever's trying to reach people is to vary content way more quickly and way more granularly based on what you know and to A-B test that pretty much algorithmically without a human being being involved in it. So today, if I'm Kroger, I could probably serve a brand 5,000 different audience segments based on behaviors that are relevantly different from one another, but today no brand has the ability to run 5,000 different campaigns in a way that makes any sense at all. What AI is going to allow, I think, is the ability to do that in some pretty interesting ways. AI is actually ever-present in retail. And one of the easy ways to get on this trend is to hook your e-commerce site up into some AI. An easy way? Use AI product recommendations. You can have it based on the customer search history, their previous purchases, their preferences, and really surface items to them that they're going to care about. That's called hyper-personalization. Looking at the future of e-commerce in the next few years, and in particular, like how data analytics overlaps with that, I think if you ask a thousand people this question right now, a thousand people would answer AI in some way as one of the biggest driving forces in the industry. And I think, look, we're still early stages there. So a lot of people talk about how AI is going to help people. Very, very few people have metrics on how AI has improved their business. And so I think what that tells me is that we're still early. We're in an exploration phase where we think that automation and improvements can have an effect on our business, but we're not sure the magnitude of that. Is it 1% improvement? Is it 10% improvement to important metrics like uh, cost of goods, shipping times, conversion rate on your website? the effectiveness of your advertising. I would say those three or four are key areas where we look for analytics and AI to have an impact in future years. You know, understanding customer behavior is what's gonna help you improve your data-driven decision-making. It's gonna put a retailer in a better position to make those decisions around improvements that you wanna to make to the customer's experience and really eliminate the guessing that typically has come along with those changes. Things like predictive analytics. And at the end of the day, data is the key, right? So having better data allows you to improve your inventory management. It allows you to enhance your sales and marketing strategies, right? You're better positioned to improve that experience for the customer. But it also allows you to look at cost reduction and really process improvement from an internal perspective, really looking at your internal logistics, supply chain, operations data, use that data as it relates to the overall future of where you want to go and making good decisions for your customers and for your organization as a whole. In our next episode, as part of the Modern Retail Experience, we'll uncover the world of customer incentives and highlight how loyalty and reward programs are shaping the face of the industry. 
To learn more about the Retail Cloud Alliance, don't forget to click the link below and subscribe to our channel so you're first in line to watch the latest episodes.